हेलो स्टूडेंट्स लेट्स डिस्कस द फोर्थ चैप्टर ऑफ फ्लेमिंगो टुडे द रैट रैप बाय सेल्मा लेजरलॉफ लेट्स टॉक अबाउट द ऑथर शी वाज अ स्वीडिश राइटर एंड द फर्स्ट वुमन राइटर टू विन द नोबेल प्राइज फॉर लिटरेचर इन द ईयर 1909 एंड शी वाज बोर्न इन 1858 एंड डाइड इन 1940 This chapter talks about two themes and these are essential goodness is present in every human being and also kindness and compassion can change anybody's life these are the two themes so students the story is told in the form of a fairy tale and the author talks about a person a rat trap seller who used to collect wires and made rat traps whenever he had time and actually it was his business but this uh, business was not a flourishing one and it was not even enough for him to survive on it so he had to resort to that means he had to turn to stealing or begging in order to keep his body and soul together which means in order to survive condition was very bad his clothes were in rags they were torn and he was lonely he did not even have a home he was a wanderer a vagabond so one day in the second paragraph he talks about his uh, uh, ploddings while he used to just roam around here and there thinking about his thoughts one day while he was just roaming around the world he got struck with a philosophical idea which was entertaining too and this idea was that the world is a big rat trap so the poet has used a metaphor here for the world he has compared the world with a rat trap so according to him the world existed for only one purpose and that purpose was to set baits for people and these baits were in the form of riches and joys shelter and food and clothing etc and once anybody let himself be tempted to touch that bait similarly just like in the case of a rat trap just like a rat trap offered cheese and pork and bread and things like that and once anybody was tempted to touch it it closed in upon him similarly this world's rat trap with its riches and joys tempted people and if anybody dared to go near that trap then everything just ended for that person and he felt so happy thinking about these things and these things this philosophical idea an entertaining idea gave him an unwanted and unusual joy to think ill of the people he felt so happy because the world had never treated him kindly so it became his favorable pastime his cherished pastime and he just thought of people who were just letting themselves be caught in this dangerous trap and who were and the others who were just moving around this trap so one day the rat trap seller reaches a crofter's house and the crofter was unlike the other people he did not have a sour face like most of the people who met the rat trap seller but he welcomed him he himself was alone he was living alone in a cottage and he was happy to have a guest so he not only gave him food to eat supper and offered porridge to him he also gave him a big piece of his tobacco roll and they both played cards too and this particular crofter was now an old man he also shared a confidential secret with uh, the rat trap seller and he told him that once when he was young he used to work at the iron mill and also at the farm but now he was old so it was his cow which gave him support but that cow was an extraordinary cow and it could give milk for the creamery the factory that sells dairy products every day and only last month the uh, crofter had earned 30 kroners by selling milk and he had earned them in payment so he was very happy the crofter felt 
that the peddler, the rat trap seller, did not believe him. Therefore, he got up and he went near his window and uh, he just uh, took out the pouch that he had hung on a nail near the window frame and from that pouch he showed his 30 kroner, uh, the 310 kroner notes to the peddler and then thereafter after showing them uh, to the peddler he stuffed them again into the pouch and hung it there the next morning both of them got up in a happy mood and uh, the grofter was in a hurry to uh, go and uh, milk his cow therefore uh, the peddler also got up and they both left the home of uh, the uh, crofter at the same time but after half an hour the rat trap peddler came back again to the same cottage but this time he did not try to get inside the cottage but he just went near that window pane broke that pane and got hold of the pouch and took out the money from it and went away since he was a trained robber he knew that he should not venture on the main road so he moved towards the woods he moved towards the forest and he felt very happy at his smartness he felt that he was very smart and that he had outsmarted the crofter by robbing him of his money initially the journey was a very pleasant one the safe one a safe one but later on he just got confused in the forest and he felt as if he was just going round and round and was not able to come out of the forest now at this point of time his own idea his philosophical idea came to his mind of the world being a rat trap now as he couldn't move out he thought the entire forest with its trunks and branches with its everything was like was uh, like a rat trap a big rat trap for him from which he could never escape so that is why he calls it impenetrable he thought that his end was near and he is going to die there soon and in the next paragraph he says that as it was the month of winter the month of december and it was already dark so danger was looming large upon the uh, rat trap peddler and he was also very tired he was so tired that he couldn't even move further but then he heard a sound he heard the sound of a thumping of a hammer beating uh, you know uh, and he realized that there was uh, uh, you know an iron mill nearby and he gathered all his strength he uh, and uh, he uh, just bucked himself up and he moved uh, with a lot of difficulty he staggered he walked unsteadily towards the direction of that sound the sound that he heard from the iron mill So the peddler with a lot of difficulty moved towards the Ramso iron works and he just sneaked into the mill, he just sneaked into the workshop that was there and uh, uh, there in the workshop the master smith was sitting with his helper and they were sitting near the furnace and they were just waiting for the pig iron, the raw iron to uh, melt and they were just trying to put it on the uh, anvil and what is an anvil? It is a heavy block of iron uh, which has a smooth top, a flat top on which which metals are shaped by hammering so uh, every now and then one of them just got up uh, out of the two one just got up to just stir uh, the uh, iron and uh, with the help of an iron handle and uh, they were just dripping with sweat uh, because they were sitting near the fire they were sitting near the furnace and uh, even though they were not wearing uh, uh, much they were just wearing a long shirt and a pair of wooden shoes so as the master smith and his helper were busy in their work as melting of iron was going on nobody noticed this peddler and uh, this rat trap seller and a lot of as there was a lot of noise that was uh, going on and uh, so when he just entered uh, the workshop and stood near the furnace only then they had a look at him and it was just a glance at him because it was not unusual for people it was not unusual for strangers to uh, come in for shelter so uh, the blacksmith just looked at him very casually very indifferently so uh, the peddler the rat trap seller asked permission from the master's uh, blacksmith but he didn't pay any attention to him and he just uh, uh, he just simply nodded which showed that he had given his consent without uttering a word uh, he just uh, gave his consent that uh, the peddler could stay there for the uh, night and uh, the iron master uh, of uh, that mill 
he was uh, you, you know he was a very famous iron master a very famous a prominent iron master of uh, uh, that area and his ambition his desire was to give a good quality iron to the market so for th for that reason he used to come day uh, during the day and during the night too for inspection for various rounds of inspection and uh, that uh, day too that night too he came there and the first thing uh, he noticed was the tall ragamuffin ragamuffin that means the man was in rags he was uh, weather beaten he was uh, shabbily dressed and uh, he saw that uh, he was lying near the furnace and uh, steam was coming out of of his wet clothes but he did not follow the example of the blacksmiths that means he did not ignore uh, the uh, uh, man he uh, but the blacksmith had hardly paid any attention to him he went near him and he just took off his hat in order to have a close look at the man he wanted to watch him closely but of course it is you neil jolof said the iron master so the iron master mistook him for an old acquaintance neil jolof and uh, uh, the man with the rat traps had never before seen the iron master he didn't know who the iron master was or what his name was uh, but he felt that uh, he shouldn't uh, disclose the truth to him at once because he thought that the iron master would give him some money thinking him to be an old acquaintance and he just said that things were going downhill for him and he was not doing well and he just said that if he was in the regiment he wouldn't have let him go he wouldn't have let him resign so and he wanted him to accompany him to his home but the tramp was not pleased with this thought with this invitation as he had not expected this he felt that he could be arrested he might be handed over to the police as his identity would be revealed sooner or later if he goes to the iron master's house because sooner or later iron master would come to know that he is not his old acquaintance it would be like throwing himself into a different a difficult situation a dangerous situation like a lion's den but the iron master thinks differently he has a different mindset and he feels that the tramp doesn't want to go to go with him because he's feeling uncomfortable because of his miserable condition he's feeling embarrassed the iron master insisted on taking him home because he wanted to give some relief uh, to his uh, destitute companion his friend but uh, the uh, uh, tramp didn't want to go he repeatedly told him uh, the iron master repeatedly told him that as it is they were living alone he was staying only with his eldest daughter his sons were abroad and his wife had already passed away and they wanted to have some company on christmas but uh, but when the tramp repeatedly said no the iron master had to go away and he told uh, the blacksmith that uh, captain von stahl uh, you know he called the tramp captain von stahl and uh, he told uh, the uh, uh, blacksmith uh, that uh, this captain is particularly going to give uh, him company uh, that night but he laughed while going which is uh, which was an indication of something so the laugh of the iron master was a clear indication to the blacksmith who understood it and who knew it that this was not his last word and soon it happened that in less than half an hour uh, the sound of carriage was heard and in it was the iron master's daughter and the eldest daughter who was staying with him so apparently he had uh, sent his daughter in order to convince uh, the uh, peddler to come to their home the manor house so the iron master's daughter came and she was followed by a valet a driver who was holding a big fur coat in his arms and uh, everything was the same inside the forge and uh, the uh, tramp the peddler was lying down on the floor now and he had used a piece of uh, raw iron he had kept it under his uh, head as a pillow as, as soon as uh, the young girl came in and uh, she just uh, uh, found the man lying there she lifted his hat in order to have a better look at him the uh, man the tramp uh, the peddler was uh, uh, having the habit of sleeping very uh, lightly this is the meaning of sleeping with one eye open and he just uh, got startled and he abruptly opened his eyes and uh, got afraid the girl was uh, uh, not very beautiful but she was a very simple and a shy girl this is how the author describes her 
So the young girl introduced herself as Edla Wilmanson and told the tramp that she had taken her father's permission in order to invite him home and she said that she was so sorry for him as he was going through such a difficult time in his life and she looked at him uh, with her eyes full of compassion with her eyes full of kindness and at once she noticed that the man was frightened he was afraid of something and she thought to herself that the man had either stolen something or he had escaped from the jail so her she was quite observant unlike her father and she was very sharp minded but uh, she insisted uh, on inviting him home and she insisted that uh, he should accompany uh, her uh, to her home in order to celebrate christmas with them edla's warmth her sincerity and her friendliness and the compassion in her eyes instilled the peddler's confidence in her and he accepted her invitation he also accepted the uh, fur coat that was offered uh, uh, to him by the valet and uh, the uh, blacksmith was uh, so much astonished he was so much sur uh, surprised to uh, see uh, the peddler going uh, along with edla so he had accepted the invitation but while he was uh, going along with her in the carriage to the uh, manor house he had evil forebodings evil forebodings means that he had unpleasant feeling in his mind that something bad is going to happen because he here again he feels that the carriage and uh, you know th this is like a rat trap and he has again been trapped in a, a kind of a he has been trapped in this uh, you know world it's, it's it's a rat trap for him while he was in the carriage the rat trap peddler cursed himself for having stolen the crofter's money and now he felt that he was in a trap from which he could never move out from which he could never come out the next morning it was christmas eve and the iron master was thinking of his old friend and he was thinking of doing something for his old friend first of all he felt that he should be uh, given something he should be fed properly and then he should uh, be given a proper job and as he was a captain earlier he should not be just running around the world selling around the country selling rat traps he should get a decent job and this was what uh, the iron master was thinking for his old friend Edla told her father that she found it very strange that the man was in such a miserable condition and also she did not think him to be educated at all as her father uh, thought him to be as her father considered him to be a captain but her uh, but her father the iron master told her to be patient and uh, the man was uh, uh, given a warm uh, welcome at the manor house and he was given a shave he was given a refreshing bath and a change of clothes too and after all this after this transformation he was presented before the iron master after the stranger was presented in front of the iron master the iron master soon realized his folly his mistake he at once came to know that this was not the person he thought him to be and in broad daylight he at once realized that this was not his old acquaintance his old friend and uh, he got very really very angry and uh, but the stranger made uh, no attempt to carry on with his uh, with his pretense and uh, he just said uh, in front of the iron master that it was not his fault at all because he had pleaded again and again to be allowed to stay in the workshop and now he said no harm had been done now also and he could just put on his rags and go away from there but the iron master was very angry and he felt that the man had been dishonest and he wanted to hand him over to the police the man the tramp at this point of time you know just presented his the philosophical idea of the world being a rat trap in front of the iron master and he said that one day might come that the iron master might be tempted towards some big piece of bait and uh, might be caught in the trap so this was the idea that was presented by the uh, tramp in front of the iron master which made the iron master ha have a hearty laugh after the iron master heard about this philosophical idea uh, of the world being a rat trap from the tramp 
uh, he felt quite amused and he decided not to hand him over to the police but he asked him to leave his house at once and the moment he was about to go edla elder wilbinson the iron man's daughter interceded for the uh, man for the tramp and she didn't want him to go she wanted him to stay she wanted him to be cheerful she wanted him to have one day of peace she wanted to help him out and uh, she requested her father to let him stay there for christmas edla told her father that she was feeling very sorry for the stranger because he did not have a single place in the entire country where he could feel at home because every everywhere people just turned him away they just chased him away and he was often you know afraid of getting arrested by the police and she wanted him to have one day of peace with them at least on christmas the iron master initially was reluctant but later on he just uh, gave in uh, in front of his uh, daughter and he agreed to uh, let him stay there but uh, he wanted to reassure himself and he also told his daughter that he only hoped that uh, she would not have to regret this decision of hers later on the unknown guest was given a very hospital stay at uh, the manor house he just kept on eating throughout the day and kept on sleeping in between the festivities and he time and again he just wondered and kept on looking at the young girl who had interceded for him who had intervened and who had you know been so compassionate towards him and he wondered why she was so kind to him he could not understand the reason he spoke no word he didn't cause any no trouble to uh, both the father and the uh, girl and just kept on sleeping throughout the day and eating in between in the evening away again when he was uh, aroused from his sleep and called for the christmas festivities he just kept on standing over there without uttering a single word and later on after uh, the festivities he just thanked each and every one present there and uh, thanked his hosts and uh, bid uh, good night to them but before that edla uh, told him that the suit that he was wearing which was of her father uh, her father wanted that it uh, it uh, be kept with him only as a christmas present he did not need to return it and also she added that if he wanted uh, to come back uh, again to their house any time he, he is most welcome he could uh, spend that even the next uh, christmas with uh, them the rat trap peddler the tramp did not see anything to what uh, edla had told her but he just kept on staring at her in uh, limitless in infinite surprise and amazement he was amazed at uh, the kindness the compassion the generosity of the girl the next morning the iron master and his daughter edla they just went towards uh, the church and uh, since uh, the, the the guest was sleeping they didn't want to disturb him but when they were coming back uh, the girl edla was very upset because she had learned at uh, uh, the church that uh, one of uh, uh, the, the one of the rat trap sellers had robbed an old crofter who had had worked at the uh, at their iron works and he knew and she knew that uh, it was the same man only and sarcastically her father uh, told her that he ha- she had let in a very fine fellow into the house she was very upset she was very dejected and sad the moment they reached home the iron master immediately asked his servant what all was missing from their home the servant replied that the stranger had not taken anything with him but in fact he had uh, he had left a small gift a gift which was meant for uh, edla wilmanson as a christmas present the girl opened that uh, package which was not very finely done and uh, the uh, the things that were there in the package were immediately could be seen immediately and uh, they were visible very clearly and uh, she found that uh, he had left for her a small rat trap and and three wrinkled 10 kroner no, ro- notes which he had robbed from the crofter and uh, she was so happy that uh, on looking at this that she gave an ecstatic cry of joy she was so ex- she was so happy uh, with herself that uh, she had not been let down by the uh, stranger he also left a note for edla 
and in the note he had expressed his thankfulness for the hosp hospitality and the warmth that was shown to him by her and he admitted and he admired the manner in which she had been so nice to him and for treating him like a true captain and now he said that he wanted to be and he wanted to behave like a captain and that is why he was thanking her for giving him the power to cleanse himself to clear himself by raising him honorably and lovingly in addition he also said that he uh, acknowledged his past mistakes in uh, in that note and he enclosed the 30 kroner that he had stolen from the crofter and he requested edla to to give the money back to the rightful owner thus in the end the peddler upheld the belief that to be grateful is a great virtue of a gentleman and he had truly reformed and he had transformed himself because of uh, edla's kindness and her generosity that is all for today children have a nice day thank you